In this tutorial, you'll learn about the new physical material that made its debut in 3ds Max 2017. Open the file named physicalmaterial.max that you downloaded for this tutorial. A download link is available in the description section of this movie. The scene is simple, with only a few objects, lights, and a single camera. It is set to use the new art renderer, and to make testing easier, the rendering target is set to active shade mode. In fact, for the purposes of this tutorial, you'll find it very handy to use active shade in a viewport. The rendering is progressive and keeps getting better until you stop it or make a change to the scene. If you'd like to learn how to set active shade in a viewport, watch the tutorial named Setting Active Shade in a Viewport available on this channel. Open the Material Editor and arrange it so you can see it next to the rendering viewport. Create a new physical material by dragging it into the working area. Double-click it to view its parameters. Apply it to the shader ball. The Active Shade viewport reacts accordingly. The first thing to notice is that you have a number of preset templates to choose from. These are easy to access and can get you a head start in your project. Test out a few to get a feel for them. What these templates are doing is simply filling the appropriate parameter values of the material. Once you understand how these parameters work, you'll be able to create any real-world material you can think of. Delete all the nodes that got created and add a new physical material and apply it to the shader ball again. Take a look at the properties one more time. There are two modes you can use to display the basic parameters, standard and advanced. In standard mode, the material's base color and reflections are combined into one section. In advanced mode, they are split into two distinctive sections. Advanced mode also has an advanced reflectance parameters section so that you can customize reflection behavior. However, you are strongly encouraged to rely on Fresnel IOR values as they work best with the physical material. The base color is the closest you have to a diffuse color, essentially the base color of the material. Reflection color is white by default, but you can see its effect by using a different color. To better appreciate the various control values, you'll experiment by creating a few varied material types. Start with the glass. This is always an interesting and historically difficult material to achieve. Reset the material values, or simply create a new one if you need to. The thing about glass, or clear glass at least, is that it actually has no base color. It's the reflection and refraction values that make it appear the way it does. Bring down the base color value to zero. The model turns black. Leave the reflection to one, as transparent glass is usually quite reflective, and crank up the transparency all the way to 1. That's a very quick and easy way to create glass. You can see the refractive properties of the material as the tile lines distort underneath the glass. The distortion is a direct effect of the Fresnel IOR value. A value of 1 creates no distortion. I like to keep glass IOR values between 1.2 and 1.7 IOR, but you can experiment more with that. I'll set it to about 1.65 for now. You may have noticed a thin walled option. This is meant for single faced window panes and provides no refraction or volume data. Do not use this option if you're not dealing with single faced elements. Tinted glass is even more fun. Change the transparency color to a green color that you like.
It's nice, but seems somehow more opaque due to the darker color. Note the transparency depth value. This controls the density of the glass. Set it to one centimeter. And notice the effects in the render window. Note how the glass is more transparent where it's thinner and more opaque where it's thicker. The higher the depth value and the less dense the glass is as it allows more light to travel through. Try out the values to see their effect. As a reference, the tiles on the floor, not the checkered pattern but the tiles themselves, are 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You can also add subsurface scattering, which is essentially for translucent materials, but which can also have a nice effect on glass. Here's what you have to remember. Some of these values work in tandem so that the total value is no more than 100%. If transparency is set to 1 or 100%, then subsurface scattering is disabled. Test it out. Set it to a bright red color with a weight of 1. And note that it has absolutely no effect on the scene. Bring down the transparency weight to about 0 0.85 and you'll notice that light traveling through the glass has a red tint to it. Subsurface scattering also has its own depth value to determine how deep light scatters under the surface. Let's try a different type of material, something metallic. Create a new physical material and apply it to the shader ball. Double-click it to edit its properties and set it to advanced mode. Like glass, metal relies very little on a base color and far more on reflections, especially with glossy metals like chrome. However, bringing the base color down to zero with reflections cranked up high gives you a very dark material. To make it more reflective, to simulate chrome, you need to significantly increase the IOR value. IOR values for metal start at around 4 and move all the way up to 50 for chromes and other slick looking metals. However, even setting the IOR to 50 still shows large areas of black reflections. That's because of how the scene is set up. There's not much to reflect other than the floor. Instead of building more geometry, you can use an HDRI background to reflect in the metal. It will also help with the lighting of the scene. You can Google for HDR panoramas to find one that you like. I found one that works well on the USC Institute for Creative Technologies website. In fact, they have several. I used the Grace Cathedral one in HDR format. Once you've downloaded it, simply go to the Environment dialog and load the HDR image as a background. You will undoubtedly need to change the camera's EV value to compensate for the increase in lighting. With the cathedral background, I use an EV value of 8. With this, the material looks much more like chrome. To turn this chrome material into a rougher metal, such as aluminum, you can start by editing the roughness value to blur the reflections. You can also make the metal darker by darkening the reflection color. This is a good base for aluminum or stainless steel material. Note that with very high IOR values, the base color weight has very little effect on the material. Decrease the IOR value to about 6, you lose the metal look. You can compensate by setting the metalness value to 1, 
to get the metal look back as it was with very high IOR values. When metalness is set to zero, light enters the model and reflections are based on the surface and subsurface properties of the object. When metalness is set to one, reflections are based on the surface alone and anything underneath is regarded as opaque. Alternatively, you can use a map to alter the roughness channel. You may need to edit the map for brightness, contrast, and tiling to get the desired effect, in this case, old aged metal. Let's try a wood material. Create a new physical material and assign it to the model. In the base color channel, use a wooden texture bitmap and make sure you are in advanced mode. Right off the bat, you have a very nice reflective wood material. For wood, I like to use IOR values between 1.5 and 2.2. You can edit the roughness depending how varnished you want the wood to be. Here's the fun part. You can add a coating layer on top of the material you've defined. For wood, it's like adding a top coat layer of varnish. Open the coating parameters rollout and choose a dark beige brownish color. Note that the coating layer has its own IOR value. Set that value to about 2.5 and the weight to 0.5. You should see your wood texture darken in the viewport. Adjust the effect underlying color value to see the results. This is like polishing and staining an old parquet floor to give it a new life. Let's do one more material to simulate polished stone or ceramic tiles. Create a new physical material and apply it as you have learned to do. Add a tiles map to the base color channel and set the tiling to 2 by 2. First off, notice the fact that the material is reflecting both on the tile and in the grout. To prevent this from happening, duplicate the map using Shift Move, and then apply the duplicate to the Reflectivity map channel. Double-click the new map and in advanced mode, adjust its colors. Set the grout color very dark to prevent any reflections there. And set the texture color to a very bright gray, but not completely white. I like to prevent using extremes when using physical materials. You can also connect this map to the bump channel for more effect. Now go back to adjusting the materials parameters for polished stone or ceramics, an IOR value between 1.6 and 2.8 should do. You may elect to adjust other values as well, such as roughness. For the tile color, you can go back to editing the color value in the base color channel, or use a map. In addition to what you have learned so far, there's one more parameter you haven't experimented with, the emission parameter. 
This parameter makes the material self-illuminated and actually contributes to scene lighting. The material itself becomes a light source. Set the weight to 1 and see the effect of white illumination. You can adjust the emission color value and the color temperature for more varied results as well as the luminous value to control the intensity of the generated light. Now that you have experimented with different material types, it is up to you to come up with your own. You can rely on what you have learned in this tutorial and also by analyzing the parameters of the samples found in the preset list. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and will be back with you very soon.